Hello people, thanks for coming to my channel. Just a little disclaimer, if you can hear a bit of crackling in the background, it's actually one of these uh, candles right here. Um, the way it works is there's an actual wood wick. Uh, I don't want to drip candle wax on this, so I'll show you this way. Uh, it's probably not very clear in the video, but it uh, makes a crackling sound. I uh, hope it's not irritating in the video, but it's quite relaxing actually. It's like looking at the embers of fire. I don't really know how it stays alight. But anyway, that's what that is. You smoke its incense. Um, so uh, another thing I just want to say in passing, because uh, I won't be making a separate video on it, is the news that the former IOC president, Jack Trogue, has passed away at the age of 79. Um, Rogue was a Belgian Olympian. I don't believe he ever won a medal, but um, he had a lengthy presidency of the IOT from 2001 to 2013. Um, and it was under his uh, watch that uh, uh, some of the biggest games ever were held, Beijing and London among them. Um, Athens, of course, coming back home to Greece. Um, his tenure wasn't without controversy, certainly awarding the game to China. Uh, to Beijing um, was one of those controversies, but um, he also uh, had some important uh, initiatives within the IOT, for example, the launching of the Youth Olympics. So, uh, rest in peace, Jack Trogue, you made your mark on the sporting world. Right, what I want to talk about here is um, actually, I was going to talk about the subject anyway, but I've just found an article that kind of uh, ties into what I'm going to talk about, and that is the issue of so-called cultural appropriation. I say so-called because I'm very sceptical of the term and certainly how it's weaponized by the woke left. So uh, this is an article from the Daily Mail. Um, just a disclaimer again, I, I'm not a big fan of the Daily Mail. I don't agree with everything it purports, uh, well, it publishes. I don't agree with its angle all the time, but um, it is good for exposing things like this. Anyway, this is in a piece uh, called Eden Confidential um, by Richard Eden. From woke, to, from woke to woke, Nigella Powell accused of racist cooking. So a young woman who's a friend of Nigella Lawson has found herself targeted and it's absurd. I'm just going to read this out. This is the article. It's from, uh, I should say, it's from August the 19th, so about 10 days ago. I have a bit of a backlog of newspapers. I'll just read it out, it's not too long. Who knew that frying noodles was racist? A friend of Nigella Lawson and Mary Berry has been forced to fight back after being accused of racism for daring to publish a Chinese cookbook, even though she's white. Pippa Middlehurst, a cancer research scientist, who won the BBC show Britain's Best Home Cook has caused tempers to boil over with dumplings and noodles. Cultural critic and journalist Rosalind Talisan posted a photograph of Manchester-born Pippa online yesterday and post posed the question, why did a white woman write a cookbook about dumplings and noodles? This provoked a feeding frenzy of abuse with poor Pippa, 28, receiving hundreds of angry messages. So basically, this journalist uh, Rosalind Talatan has has encouraged mob outrage against this woman. The BBC recipe writer who studied Chinese cookery at Lanzhou Noodle School. Lanzhou is a Chinese city. It's the largest city in Gansu province. Um, and has been eating dim sum dumplings since she was a child. So clearly she has some experience. Um, complained about the woke bully saying attacking an individual that you know nothing about and calling me an arrogant and non-creative white woman allows others who respect your opinion to justify harassing me. Um, however, filmmaker Ayesha Siddiqui refused to accept her response, telling her, I'm not sure you understand or care at all. Domestic goddess Nigella was even dragged into the row after she posted Pippa's chili oil recipe on her website. Lawson said she had tried it out and it filled her with joy. However, the woke police told her that she was not allowed to post ethnic recipes by a white person. In response, Nigella defended her friend, saying, My cookbook corner section features writers of all backgrounds and cultures. What next? Italian storming Nigella HQ after she cooked Asa Carbonara. 
Firstly, this journalist Rosalind Talasan, I haven't found um I haven't found like any sort of social media profile to see if she's really pushing this thing or not. But you know, shame on her, shame on her, because what she's doing here, um, referring to this specific case, is creating a vindictive attitude against this young woman for no other reason than um, endorsing Chinese recipes. And it's important to note that she has a background. She studied in Lanzhou, which, like I say, is a Chinese city. I wonder, um, have all her critics done that? Have all her critics actually studied Chinese cuisine? You know, being Chinese or East Asian doesn't mean that they're experts. Um, so I think this is very unfortunate, very sad. Uh, I I'm tempted, actually, to send her a message of support. Just say, keep your head high. Don't let these bullies get you down. But this is what this is what woke activists do these days. They're bullies, and it's very sad. Uh, but to get into this issue of cultural appropriation, which is one of the things they like to throw out, um, I think it's absurd because it's essentially saying that unless you are directly part of an ethnicity or a nationality. You cannot appreciate or endorse that culture whatsoever. And if you're white, and it's almost always aimed at white people, um, then, you know, if you show an interest in another culture, if you show, this has seemed to particularly hit the culinary world, I've noticed. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, who's by no means my favourite person in the world, I don't like the guy, um, but, you know, he found himself in the firing line because his restaurant's using um, oriental recipes, I believe. Um, I just think the term is utterly absurd because if you strip it back to its purest form, then nobody should be allowed to endorse any other culture because that would be appropriating. I recall, and I always bring up this case when I think about the subject, I recall a young American woman um, white woman who for her prom decided to wear a Chinese style chipa, which we also know as a chung sam. It's a silk dress, usually red and uh, very elegant. Um, and I assume that's why she wanted to wear it, but she thought it was elegant, it was comfortable. Um, I believe they're relatively affordable, so I assume those are all the reasons that she chose to wear it. Of course, she immediately got hounded because she's not Chinese as if only Chinese women are allowed to wear it. Um, and just keeping with China, I bought a Chinese shirt. Uh, I'm not sure what the formal name of it is, but I got it in a mountain area uh, from, a, from a kiosk stall. I just like the look of it. It's comfortable. It's a cotton shirt. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, but here's the thing. When I wear that, which isn't often because I don't want to damage the material, but... I'm not trying to be a Chinese guy. I'm not saying I'm an Asian. I know I'm a white guy. I know I'm a Westerner. I just like the style. I find it comfortable. So I really think these woke bullies need to be challenged on this nonsense. Because taken to its purest, this idea of cultural appropriation would be that no one should be allowed to appreciate or endorse any other culture. But of course, it's mostly aimed at white people. Although probably, I mean, I'm thinking of the Carl Douglas hit from 1976, Kung Fu Fighting. There you had a black guy talking about the popularity of Kung Fu. Now, I wonder if that was released today, would would a black singer, um, you know, doing something like that, would they be attacked? Would an Asian person be criticised for maybe um, endorsing reggae culture? Or, you know, the list could go on. But, you know, British people could fire back and say, well, how about when the works of Shakespeare are adapted into other languages, sometimes of totally different casts, you know, that do not depict Jacobi in Europe, more specifically Jacobi in England. But I think any sane British person wouldn't be offended because we would see it as our culture being promoted. And actually, if you really value your culture, you should be grateful that it's being celebrated, that it's being endorsed. Now, there is a caveat to this. Obviously, if if someone is making a claim for something to be authentic, then they should be true to that. 
if, for example, they're saying this is authentic Chinese cuisine or Mexican cuisine or whatever it might be, then they have to be true to that. I think passing off something that as authentic and it's not is disrespectful. So that is the only caveat I would allow that, um, or I would humor, you know, that there has to has to be an authenticity and respect there. So if people are just mocking another culture, you know, if they're being flippant about it, if they're being um, really disrespectful, uh, that's that's wrong, you know. And obviously, that's going to aggravate and insult people. That's wrong. But if someone is, you know, simply endorsing another culture. And especially if they have a background in it. I mean, the fact that this woman is white doesn't mean that she has no expertise. She actually studied in China. She knows what she's talking about. So it makes me angry that these woke bullies think they can harass her in this way. And that journalist should be ashamed of herself for encouraging it. Um, I'm honestly tempted to contact her just to offer support. I don't, I don't know her. I don't follow cooking or anything like that. But I think she needs to know that there are sane people out there who believe in common sense. But when you take this argument about cultural appropriation to its extreme, I mean, a country like the UK is extremely diverse. You know, right now I'm burning Egyptian musk incense on a laptop that's probably made in the Far East. Um, I'm reading a British newspaper uh, last night. Uh, last night I was drinking a Belgian beer. Um, I was watching, uh, well, not last night, the night before, I was watching a, a Filipino film. You know, I I endorse cultures from all over the place. It doesn't mean I'm appropriating. It doesn't mean I'm trying to be something that I'm not. So really, I think there needs to be a pushback against this argument about cultural appropriation. Because I think it is yet another way that woke activists um, you know, I uh, use to try and shackle people. And it, it's just so sad because the very same people would be the first to yell racism if you had a white person who was totally inward looking and didn't endorse other cultures. They'd say, oh, you're parochial, you're jingoistic, you're inward looking. So you can't win. You can't win when it comes to woke ideology. Um, and I just think it's very sad. But like I say, there, there should be authenticity and respect. Um, I remember another case a while back where two comedians were trying out different cuisines and they sampled uh, a food from Asia, I forget which country it was, but uh, one of them kind of grimaced at what they were eating. Now, people pretending to be from that culture got offended and they said it was disrespectful. But there's another thing about this which I find interesting. When you hear complaints about it, it's almost always within the West. And okay, the people complaining might be of Asian descent or black, you know, they might be black people. But what's interesting is you never see these complaints, or at least very, very rarely, when you have white people, uh, white tourists or whatever the case may be, in Asian countries or majority black countries, you don't see the same argument about appropriation. I mean, when I was in the Far East, I've only been to China, but when I was in China, I saw cafes in bigger cities um, sort of using a British style, a British uh, theme. So they had London post boxes, they had Union Jacks everywhere. In fact, the Union Jack is probably used more than any other flag, even more than the American flag as a sort of fashion statement. But British people are generally not bothered by that. Um, I mean, we could choose to be petty and say, oh, they're disrespecting our flag. But I don't think they are. I think they, it's just a recognition that it's a nice design. Um, so I just think this is a very sad thing that people are so petty about this that they're willing to bully and shame others. There's another argument about it, you know, particularly when it comes to fashion or hairstyles or something like that. Um, nobody has a business to tell other people what they should and shouldn't wear unless it's absolutely an issue around security. And that's an extreme exception. So, for example, if you have a white guy who has long hair and he maybe wants to have it in reggae style, that's his business. It's his hair. This idea, oh, he can't do it because he's a white guy. Um, I think it's grotesque. 
And I think there needs to be a pushback against us. These professional complainers, i.e. woke activists, need to get over themselves and grow up. Endorsing all our cultures is surely a good thing. Surely that's a symbol of being open-minded, is it not? And this, this mantra that you're only allowed to um, try out Chinese cooking, for example, if you're Chinese, that's crazy. I mean, to be honest, this woman has probably more experience in what she's doing than a lot of her critics. Just because you come from a country or culture doesn't mean you automatically are an expert on it, more so than someone who might be outside the culture but has taken time to study it. I mean, you could get someone, for example, who um, might be, they might have a PhD in a particular field from a particular country. It could be anything. It could be the history of the Indus civilization, the Indus Valley civilization. Now, if they've taken a PhD in that subject, chances are they will know more than the average Indian, right? Uh, you could have an Indian guy, just to throw that around, who has taken a PhD in um, the Tudors, the Tudor dynasty. And he or she might know more about that than the average Briton. So just because someone is from a culture doesn't automatically qualify them as an expert and it doesn't give them a right to dictate to others you can't enjoy this. It makes me quite angry actually because it's not only petty, it leads to bullying. It leads to individuals being hounded and harassed in this way. So yeah, I'm going to try and send her a message of support if I can. Um, people might think that's a little bit eccentric but I, I believe in balancing things out. I've done it before. Let me know your thoughts. I, I just think, summed up, I just think the whole notion of cultural appropriation in most cases is absurd. It's different if people are mocking the culture or they're trying to be something that they're not. For example, they're white and they're claiming to be Asian or black. That is absurd and they, they deserve ridicule for that. But I really think that this whole notion of cultural appropriation, it's just a killjoy shackling, unpleasant narrative. You know, just because you're Asian or black doesn't mean that you and you alone are allowed to appreciate culture within, within. you know. Um, you might know about it, you might look at it from a certain angle, but this idea, all oh, white people aren't allowed to enjoy it, what the hell? You don't have a right to tell other people what they can and can't enjoy what they can and can't endorse. And if this young woman has trained in this particular cuisine, why shouldn't she promote it? I could understand if she'd just come in yesterday, you know, having never done it and then publish a book, having known nothing about the subject. But that doesn't appear to be the case. She has a background. 